Not talking. When they finish, you can upload, but not when they are talking. If they get stuck in English, please don't say whoosh, um, please. <laughs> Be quiet and be relaxed. And the other thing is that um, they have three minutes. We have briefed them already. And to the teachers, please relax. Okay, don't be tense. Relax. Stand here. Okay. If the English words you have exhausted them all, switch to your mother tongue. <laughs> but please understand that the judges are going to score you. We have given you the scores and everything. But also, be comfortable. But bear in mind that some judges may not understand your language. So that will work against you, probably. But please, don't just walk away. Okay, stand, be confident, speak. This is for the price, okay? Are we ready to go? Judges, thank you. Your time starts now. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Silvio Machisa, and I'm representing a company called Any Power Energy. We are into solar energy, and what we do is sell products, we rent out systems, as well as, ladies and gentlemen, we offer our technical services. We've seen that energy use is closely linked to economic development, provision of vital services, as well as uh, poverty reduction. And we, we know that in here in South Africa, we have abundant sun. And this is a resource that is quite reliable. But we have also found out that uh, the industry is well dominated, and also there are barriers to entry for the ladies to come through. So what we have done is, uh, we have a model whereby we recruit our own installers, we're going to train them, as well as give them skills for life. We help them out to manage their finances, that's financial literacy. And also, ladies and gentlemen, innovation excites us. So what we have done, we have been traveling all over the world, we've secured some partners on our products, because solar has been given a bad name, uh, because of poor products. So now what we have done is, um, we have introduced the pay as you go model so that at least it becomes more affordable. We've done that with the cars, so we can still do that with energy. And um, in terms of ESCO, it's still a monopoly, and there are still problems with ESCO. So we are going to make sure that with such products, as our installers go and install all over, we, we are targeting uh, the commercial market, the industrial market, even the domestic market. We even want to rock in the rural space, because they also have problems. Just imagine a mobile um, internet cafe in the middle of Norway, fully powered by solar. We have done that with other um, companies we have collaborated with. And ladies and gentlemen, we are here to say, energy and power, we're going to give you any power. And we're going to create sustainable living for all people. And by the time that we end the first quarter of 2019, we intend to have created 100 jobs. We're currently having around 85,000 per month in terms of profit. And um, we want to scale it up higher. So what we're going to do is the database, someone goes and install, and they get a token at the end of the month, they cash it out. Already we have markets, and now we just want to create more value with our people and make sure that we create sustainable living. Thank you. <laughs> Judges, questions? Thank you. Um, tell me, solar has a bad name because um, it's an inconsistent technology. How have you overcome that um, issue within the, um, your solution? Okay. Thank you for your question, man. What you've done, we have done a little bit of research and development. I myself have studied energy engineering. I have eight years of experience. We have recruited interns, and in the process, I mean, we, we registered in 2017. We have also come up with our own um, products, whether we know what works and what doesn't work. We know which suppliers, this product we have to get from the West, that's Netherlands. This product, we have to go to China. These are the best panel manufacturers, and so on and so on. So we are not relying on the people just bringing the product, but we also take advantage of that. We have partnerships with um, the Copa Belt University in Zambia, China University of Technology in Zimbabwe, to make sure that we, we, we try products before they get onto the shelf. Thank you so much. What's your barrier to capacity? Number one, skin. I want to be honest. Number two, the idea is, um, in the last year, we have designed systems for UNISA, two 30 kilowatt systems. We just were restricted to design and consultancy. Because we didn't have much money to, I mean, to, to supply the product, then they pay later to have already a barrier. So finance is an issue. But if you get that 20,000, we want to train as much installers so that at least we can break the pie. 
Someone, some way, we know someone else. We will we, we attack the market. Time out. I am the founder and CEO of Elias Energy Alliance. We provide renewables consultancy to our clients, including energy efficiency and renewables. We also assist with the various finance options available, and we provide our clients with advice on incentives and grants that they can qualify for. CSI is also a very big portion of my business. We provide our corporates with very awesome CSI solutions, including a portable, one of these is a portable LED solar light, and battery power and battery bank, which gives children the opportunity to study at night. It increases the level of education, it reduces the risk of fires in informal settlements. My experience includes being a banker for seven years of my life. I had my own recruitment company for four years, and I've been in the renewables industry as an industrial lighting specialist for five years, uh, as my own business owner for the last year and a few months. And over that last five years, I've realized that the main barriers to entry for the renewables industry and the main problem is that people don't understand how awesome renewables, take, renewables are. And the second problem is they don't have the finance to buy the solar systems or the, or the, or the equipment. Um, and the third and the most, the most problematic issue is ESCOM. People are sick of the ESCOM issues, the corruption, the disruptions. They're sick of the billing problems. They're not able to access and to take control of the energy and the finances. And for that reason, I developed a renewables finance platform. It's called Helios Energy App. It's the world's first socially inclusive, uh, collaborative, and socially responsible renewables finance model. It provides property owners with access to information in the form of information databases, examples, case studies, and calculators to give them an informed decision on what the requirements and their budget is. It then provides them with a national database of suppliers and installers, and then gives them access to submit a credit or bankable credit app to their own bank if it's bonded, or to all the banks if it's unbonded. So it works as a finance originator, like a, like a bond originator, like better bond, but specifically for renewables technology. Um, what this does is the model creates a symbiotic relationship between the banking industry on the one side and the renewables industry on the other side. We provide the renewables industry with a reliable financing partner in the form of their clients' own banks. For the banks, we will drastically increase the amount of low risk credit applications. All of this increases demand in both the banking industry or the financial industry as well as the renewables industry. The best thing of this model is that it creates annuity income through crowdfunding for poor communities by providing poor communities with products like this or aquaponics. My hope is to provide this to schools, clinics, even children's homes and orphanages where we provide them with LED lights, solar power and aquaponics. It gives them the opportunity to grow their own food sustainably and organically. In the same way, excess food can be used to encourage informal Thank training. You. Question time. So my team right now, I'm 100% I'm business owner. My wife is my main investor. I do have a technical partner who developed my prototype app as an, as an MVP. I do have a legal advisor and accountant as well. My business is fully functional and compliant. Um, and right now my team is myself. So I've got two businesses, Helios Energy Alliance and Helios Energy App. So the app is the one side. I've just had negotiations with my ex-employer, uh, which is a, a big data company, multinational, and they're very, happy with, and they're very interested in my idea. Interested, interested to implement my idea further into the market, taking to the banks, possibly Africa and the world. Okay, what's your target market? Uh, my top priority for the next six months is I've got, like I said, a consulting business, we have got projects running, I've got uh, methods, I'm, I'm busy validating my, 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 my model as well with the banks. So I've been in Lightning for the last five years. Thank you, time up. Why do you say your ex? I thought you would say your ex-wife. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, please. Uh, let's head number five. Number five. Yeah, thank you. Judges, are we ready? Are we ready? Okay. Ready to go. Start now. Um, good day, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Grace Mandela. I'm a final year chemical engineering student at Bits University. I firmly believe in finding African solutions for African problems. Such uh, problems include our waste management crisis and the need for renewable energy. 
In Gauteng, 98 million tons of waste was disposed at our landfill sites in 2011. RMG International was then established by my business partner, Raven Modicele, and, and I to, um, to then combat this problem. Our aim is to minimize the plastic, uh, tire, and general waste disposal to our landfill sites, at the same time providing a sustainable and eco-friendly solution to, solve, uh, to, pro to producing renewable energy. One such solution is pyrolysis. Pyrolysis uses waste uh, to, con to produce uh, various oil and gas types and electricity. The technology is green, it is energy efficient, and it is sustainable. RMG was formally established in February 2018. Our journey has been tough, sourcing funding, information, uh, mentorship, and just developing a team that will help advance the vision of RMG International. RMG provides waste management solutions to various companies to, to their specific, specified desires. We also, in the near future, look to, uh, to begin producing briquettes and tiles using our waste. A recent project we embarked on was providing a waste management solution for a race course. Our aim is then to use their, help, their horse manure to produce biogas. Our mission and vision is to become the leading Af African uh, pyrofuel supplier, to be a pioneer and a leader in the fuels, the green technology and waste management sector. We hope to create sustainable jobs and provide long-lasting skills development for all our communities in which we operate. RMG, we repurpose you next. Thank you. Thank you. Questions? Um, Questions? Yeah. Yeah. So, how far are you with the pyrolysis technology and the plant that you're doing? Okay. Um, and, okay. Um, pyrolysis is an existing technology. It hasn't been used um, as much, but there is one plant operating in Kenya. Unfortunately, we wanted to build an actual plant. Unfortunately, finding uh, funding for that um, has been quite difficult. Difficult. Which is why I decided to then say, we go to companies, we go to them and we say, you know, you have waste, this is what we can do with it. Instead of just contributing to the environment, just us coming and taking the waste, we can do something with it that will benefit you and probably save uh, money for you. Like, for example, um, taking your waste, converting it to electricity, you can save on your energy bills. So, um, that's the idea. Good. So, I'm interested to know how your um, employment creation will work. Sorry, how? Okay, um, so currently we need to be, um, for example, uh, building a team, uh, working with other uh, uh, people who can bring us the skills to then provide the solutions. And then in the long term, then when once we begin to like, build plants, when, let's say uh, we provide the solution to, uh, we bring the solution to a company to say, this is what we can do your way, with your waste. We have uh, on-site plants, and we can, let's say, have four to five people that will be running the operations of this plant, and it will be they producing the gas or electricity for you. Um, and that's, I think that's how you will be creating chances. The reason I'm asking that is because renewables also have a strong IT component, so robotics and, um, you know, uh, if there, are, there are IT solutions that can, bring, that can be brought into renewables. So um, the, the question then becomes, how do you keep people employed when they can easily be replaced by a machine? Um, okay. Be easily replaced by machine. I think. Time um, up. Thank you. Can my judges use the microphone, please? Yeah, the mic when you on answering the asking the questions, because I believe that your questions will help others to just uh, number six. Time starts now. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Anderswa Selinga. I'm one of the directors of Gemini GIS and Environmental Services. We are a 100% women-owned, uh, black women-owned company, and we provide environmental management solutions to the mining and the construction sector. In South Africa, it is compulsory that the businesses that um, work in these sectors they obtain a, an environmental authorization before they can um, start with their activities that would impact the environment. And um, the activity could be construction of a road, 
uh, construction of a residential area, a factory, etc. And um, for each authorization that has been granted, they also need to comply to the environmental conditions that are attached to it. And this process um, involves impact assessments and public uh, engagements. And it takes about six to a year, and this becomes a, a pain for our clients because it delays their projects and it also affects their bottom line. So what we do is that we relieve, we relieve them of that pain, making sure that they get their authorization quicker and also provide a platform where they can be able to monitor their site to make sure that uh, they know what risks are there. And our platform uses GIS technology, data scientists that can process and analyze the data. And it also has a, a, a reporting dashboard that could actually give the user information in terms of the location of the, of the potential threats, what is causing the, the, the threats, and also give insight in how they can mitigate uh, those threats. Um, for us to be competitive and efficient in our service offering, we invest a lot in training our staff. We also implement smart technologies like uh, drones to make sure that uh, we provide real-time information and collect information in areas that are not easily accessible due to, um, due to safety conditions. And um, we also use partners especially in areas where we feel that we don't have the, the expertise. So we partner with um, some of the experts in our field. Um, and, and that means that most of our operation costs, which is about 70% of it, they go to staff salaries and also consultancy fields, fields and 30% uh, of that goes to operation activities. And our revenue stream... Time up. Thank you. Questions? <clears throat> okay, let's use the mic to ask the questions. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much for your pitch. Uh, don't feel, don't feel fake anymore. It's fine. So I wanted to know um, how do you monetize this model? You mean the, the processes? Um, we, we use, uh, okay, there's, there's data scientists that are actually on site where they would um, walk on site carrying a, a, a device that would identify any potential threats that are on site. And um, that information is fed into a database that a user or a project uh, or operations manager could actually view. And the, dash, the dashboard that I was talking about would actually give information in terms of um, what threats are there on site. Um, okay, quick question. Um, why are you pitching here? Because you've got an innovative business, number one. Number two, it's by law they have to use your service. Three, you're a black woman-owned company, so there's tremendous Time up. Thank you. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> um, I, my job was to moderate um, the, the scores that were given by the uh, judges, I have to say it was interesting, it was like idols, because you get a, a kind judge and you get a quite uh, a ruthless judge. I'm not going to say who is who or not, but we did have a team second, you know, and then we did have a random. So, so um, anyway, I'm just saying, what's lovely is that I could see when I was uh, looking at the scores, the consistency, you know, because remember I said, uh, one of the judges said, I, I seem to have been too kind with my score. And I said, well, you're kind with everybody, so that's still fine. You know, and one felt that they were ruthless. And I said, but you're ruthless with everybody, that's still fine. I think the main thing is that that's why you have more than one judge. And then you tell you the scores because you want a balanced result. And I think, I think what was lovely is that uh, the scores were made my life a bit easier. I remember if there were people on the same... Uh, total, I would have to make the call, but fortunately we didn't have that. Um, it was it was it was uh, straight up. You know, I think the judges generally agreed on which positions were which. Um, I will now make my announcement. I think before I do, I want to congratulate everybody, including the ones that didn't make the top 15, 
coming to pitch your idea, something you're emotional and passionate about, is very difficult. You get better with time. And you need to take opportunities to pitch your idea in front of people, put your heart out there. And, you know, the first time is more terrifying than the fifth time or the fiftieth time. But believe me, it takes many times, over and over again, putting yourself out there. Um, I'm going to call number five first. And um, um, I think I start with the, the, the purse is 2,500 rand. Um, with no shareholding request, no equity request, <laughs> it was zero, there's no return, <laughs> zero equity. So 2.5k goes a long way when it has no commitments, in my humble opinion, and I know it, yeah? And um, that's uh, number 19, who should be one? Congratulations. 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 Um, I just, uh, I just, yeah, I just remembered another clap for GPU. Uh, I just remember the first time I had to, to speak in front of a crowd and my, my voice literally was cracking, shaking in my boots, you know. So again, I repeat. It takes a lot of guts to come and, and, and speak in front of people. And, and even if you feel you didn't do well, you've done amazingly well just by coming up in here. And the more you do it, the better you get. Um, practice makes perfect, simple as that. Um, I'd like to announce number four, which is the same purse as number five, two point five k And uh, that goes to number 42, Calvin. We had some amazing pitches today. Yeah? Um, um, now we're coming into a little bit of the bigger money. Um, number three, the purse is 10,000 rands and uh, zero equity. And it, 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 it's, it's number three, zero. Other entrepreneurs, yeah. very interesting yeah. business. Yeah. Yeah. All right, um, yeah, it's it's coming to the crunch. Um, the the second place purse is fifteen thousand rand, and this goes to number five, Chris. <laughs>
Ich habe is living under 500 rand a month. People are not eating. We should be ashamed of ourselves. I want to make a difference and I'm hoping that this model will be that conduit to make that difference. Thank you. Thank you.